ask you to shake hands, be friendly, and be seated. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. We got thank you. half of our people at our youth camp this morning. Amen. So we've got we've got some of them that's already gone up there. We've got some that are leaving in the morning. So we're excited about youth camp and we're excited about what God's going to do. These kids are going to be set free from all kinds of things. Amen. And um, I was just talking to Danielle back there. And, um, you know, these kids get set free, like, I mean, from suicide, homosexual tendencies, um, all kinds, I mean, just all kinds of stuff that these kids deal with today. And, um, you know, things that, some things that we didn't, you know, we didn't even think, have to think about dealing with back when we were young. You know, and it's just the world is bombarded with all kinds of filth and trash. And it is just, um, and it's just a time for them to come and be with white believers and be with kids their own age and hopefully have a good have a good time, but also just learn about the Lord and learn about what you have to resist those things. Amen. Because that, that messes a kid up and when they get taught the wrong things and taught they go through their whole life thinking they're something that they're not. And um it just ruins them if if you don't if you don't put the right things in them. And God is so good and I'm so thankful that these kids are going and I know they're just gonna have an awesome time. God is so good. Amen. But we are going to be leaving in the morning. We're going to meet here at the church at 7. So be here. All you kids that are going to camp, make sure your parents have you here by 7 because we load up and we want to try to leave by 7.30 if we can. Um, you know, we, that's, we just have to be there between 12 and 1 tomorrow. And um, so be here. What time? 7. 7. Amen. What time are we leaving? 7.30, amen? So y'all all have been warned. If we pull out and you are not here, <laughs> do not say you are not told. Uh, so uh, we have that, that's the plan. But um, other than that, we have, uh, of course, you've seen the baby shower table set out, set, set up out front for um, Miss Stacy Christmas. You guys can bring your gifts here and put them on the table. Or if you want to have them, I think on Amazon, you can have them shipped directly to her. But um, I don't know about Walmart. I have, I've, I've shipped myself directly from Amazon to her house. So she got it directly to her house. So it's whatever you want to do. That is the easiest pie cake thing ever, is to order on Amazon and click her address and boom, it's there. So it's, um, it's, it's a, technology is a blessing and a cursing. I have always said that. <laughs> My computers have always wanted me to thank them very much or throw them out the window so that you go in between. But uh, anyway, that's, so if you want to do that, that's good too. We're going to have it set up for a couple of weeks. So if you want to bring your gift, um, just put it out there on the table. Also, too, next weekend is healing service. We will have our um, monthly healing service on July the 12th. So if you know anybody that's afflicted in their body or in their mind, come. They can be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, too, we will not have a Wednesday night youth service this week due to July 4th. Um, well, well, it's really due because we're all going to be at camp. <laughs> but we're taking, we usually take the 4th off anyway that Wednesday night. So we're going to take it off this week instead of this past week, anyway, we will not have church this coming up Wednesday night, so make sure you mark your calendars for that. And um, I think that's it. We love you guys. We appreciate you. I hope you all have a wonderful fourth yesterday, celebrating our freedoms as a country, as they have are being attacked daily. We thank God that we still live in a free country. Amen. And um, we thank God, most of all, for Jesus, because he set us free. Amen. And then, so just um, just remember that. And, and anyway, love you guys. I uh, appreciate you for just coming to receive the offering. I have a lot to say about all that, but I just won't. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. All the time, He is so good. Yeah. I want to uh, this morning receive the offering, but I want you to turn with me if you could to Second Corinthians chapter nine. I'm going to read uh, to you from the uh, New Living Translation. I meant to grab that from home this morning, and uh, unfortunately, uh, for whatever reason, because we have relocated. Our New Living Translation Bible has also relocated, and uh, I've just not been able to put my hands on it yet. It's somewhere in a box, somewhere, I don't know where, I don't ask Lisa, she'll tell you where it's at, somewhere. That's what she tells me anyway. So anyway, I had to grab an NLT here this morning in order to uh, share with you a little bit. And you know, this is the season, this time of the year is the time that we get all of our fresh produce, you know that, the tomatoes, the corn, all I mean, it, this stuff's really good when, yeah, you, yeah. when you get it from the produce stand. It's so good. And, you know, thank God that 
that uh, he's still working. Yes. Amen. He's still working on our behalf, and, and, and with regard to produce, I'm thankful well, every time I eat a fresh tomato or a fresh ear of corn, I just thank God. Yeah. Amen. Because, you know, that, that stuff just, it's just wonderful. I don't know about you, I love those tomato sandwiches and, and all that kind of stuff, and you can tell I like all that good food. <laughs> anyway, but you, you, you're going to say, well, what's that have to do with the offering this morning? It has a lot to do with it. You know, all that we so desire, all that we need, God provides. Yeah. Amen? And, and He just asked us to follow just some simple rules in the Word of God. We know that it says in, in Malachi to bring all the tithes to the storehouse, right? Yeah. So we have a direction from the Lord or an instruction from the Lord that we are to bring our tithe here. But in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 in the New Living Translation, verse 6, it says this, Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And when I was reading that yesterday, I was looking at it from the standpoint that even when we bring our tithes and offerings, it, it, it would be easy for us to even misinterpret the tithe. And what it is we're supposed to bring. But the Lord puts it in your heart that one, you follow his word and do what his word says. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Well, in, in a sense, we're tithed as we know it's 10%, right, of the first fruits. But some of us could say, well, I'm going to hold back my tithe because um, I have other needs I need to take care of or other things I need to take care of. No, that's not what the word says. The word tells us that we are to bring the tithe to the storehouse so that there will be meat, amen, yes. in the house. And it says here in this word that you must each decide in your heart how much to give. The Lord will impress upon you how much you should give outside or above the give of the tithe. And don't give reluctantly. In other words, also I like to interpret that in your tithing. Don't, don't. Provide your tithe reluctantly. Don't hold back on your tithe. Don't give reluctantly responsive to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Yes. Amen? Yes, yes. Well, you can't, you, I don't know how you cannot be cheerful Amen. when you're reading the Word. Because, I mean, the joy of the Lord just will well up on yes, the inside of you every time you sit down and read the Word of Amen. God. Yes, it does. Amen? Every time. Because there's so many promises for us. And God will generously provide all you need. Amen. 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 We know over in uh, Philippians 4.19, it says there that uh, God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches. Yeah. Well, it's not only just finances he provides. He provides every need. You need health or need uh, healing from sickness today? He provides that for you today. Amen. Amen. And, and the whole interpretation here this morning is this. Be obedient to what the Word is telling you to do. And He, he will do what He promised. Right. Amen. Amen. And as you sow in your seed this morning, then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. I wanted to share just real briefly about that. I, when I was much younger in, in the Lord, I never understood the tithe perfectly, but I did it anyway. And I didn't know how you could live on 90%. Because I thought you needed all of it. But I found out by giving 10 and living on 90, it, you know, you can grow to even living on 50 and giving away 50. You know, there's so much because the Word tells us He promises that you will have plenty as you're obedient to do what His Word tells us yes, to do. Right. Amen? Are you ready to give your offering this morning? Yes, ready to present your tithes to the Lord? Yes, I believe we're having some monitor issues, so um, I'm just going to pray over the offering. And you just join along with me. Let's raise our offering before the Lord. And thank you for what He's doing. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this day. And we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. You said it as we sow, it would be given on back onto us 30, 60, even 100 fold. Father, you do that so that we can even give again 
And Father, just as the farmers so plenteous, we believe that there will be a plenteous harvest coming back onto us because of our obedience to do what your word has said for us to do. And as we give today, thank you for the increase that's flowing back into our hands. And Father, we will promise that we'll give and give and give again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You guys can sing. Hallelujah. So Shaking together, running over, we're being given of our, our bosom. Amen? Amen. And the word says, if you sow your seed in a good fertile soil, you'll reap a plenteous harvest. Why do we tithe and give? Number one, it's what God says. He instructs us to. But God tithing and giving is not God's way of getting from us. It's his way of getting to us. When you tithe and give, it gives God the ability. You say, well, God can do whatever he wants. No. God won't dishonor his word. He said, if you tithe, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. If you give, I'll multiply that seed to song. As you obey God, it allows God to move and work on your behalf. And even concerning your financial situation, it will not be impacted by the economic situation in this world. Right? So God is with us. You can give the same way. Make your checks out to RLC or Resurrection Life Church. Cash in an envelope. Send your receipt at the end of the year. But it's nothing compared to what God's doing in your life. Amen. 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 You're ready to go. Yeah. Hold up and let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We love you and thank you for this day. Your many blessings. Thank you, Father. You place us together, Father, and given us a vision. You've given us something to look at, something to behold. And you said, through the word of God and the spirit of God, you are raising up a great and mighty exceeding army. I thank you, Father. I know a son that's not here today, but many in this building right here are part of that army. And through the word and the spirit of God, they're being raised to be mighty men and women of God to accomplish your plan in these last days. We thank you for the vision you've entrusted us with. We thank you for your word. And we thank you now this morning as they sow their seed into this good fertile soil that, you are, that they will reap a plenteous yes, harvest yes, because yes. you are... Amen. multiplying the seed that's sown so they have more to give, more to be a blessing with, Father, and, Father, even more to be blessed with themselves because you said 
In 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So we thank you now. We call them blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You guys can stand as you give. Amen. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. We love you.
morning to be here in the house of the living God as we truly are the temples of the Holy Ghost. If we've made Jesus Lord of our lives, you live and dwell inside each and every one of us, Father. We thank you today, Father, for the privilege to be here, Father. We thank you. There's a word, Father. There's a word in due season, in the right time, Father. You know, as I stand here, I can open my eyes and I may know most of the people here, some of the people here, all of them. I'm not sure. But, Father, the truth of the matter is only you know every person that's here under the sound of my voice. Only you know what they're facing today and only you know everything that's to come tomorrow. So, Father, in saying that, Father, Father, this morning we must put our trust, our faith, and our dependency in you and you alone. And I thank you today, Father, as I yield myself to you as the pastor of this particular local church. The words that I speak will not just be man's words, thoughts, ideas, or opinions. They'll help nobody. But it's going to be the truth from your word. And we thank you, Father, for the leading and the guiding and the directing of the Holy Spirit to speak this word. And, Father, I, as well as the people in this congregation, I believe that we've all come together expecting by faith to receive what you have in store for us this day. And, Father, as we do this, you are going to minister in and through me into the lives of these people. They're going to receive this word that's able to change, challenge, and order the, the course of their lives forever. And we thank you, Father, the last day. Amen. All that's said and done, their lives will be changed, but most importantly, your mighty name will be glorified, magnified, and honored in all that's said and done. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated at the Sunday school, can be dismissed. God is with us. God is moving mightily. Amen. Thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for the Spirit of God. Amen. God is with us. Amen. I'm not distracted. I've been waiting all morning on the update from this Vicky, and I just got another one. So I'll tell you what said. Thank God that she is Miss Vicky Hazel, and God has been moving in her life. Amen. She's healed in Jesus' name. She's continually been getting better. This was my latest one just now, to 1030. She is doing good. They're gonna they're, she's trying, she is doing good trying to help them flip herself over. She's trying to help. Y'all know Miss Vicky. They're going to have to start flipping her again because her lungs have not been improving like they should. We're believing God differently, right? Yes. But she is alert and is aware of everything going on. And she got up. They got her braided and all pretty up today. So you ladies know she's excited about that. But daily, Miss Vicky has been improving. And we thank you. She's going to be right here. She's going to have a service and, and a time to give her testimony about God's goodness, His mercy, and His grace. Amen. And it's healing power, and it's going to encourage not only us, but others as well. For God is with us. Amen? I want you to go in your Bible to Luke chapter 15. God is with us this morning. As Ms. Lardy said, I know we got some on the way to camp. I know we got some at camp. I know we got some on vacation because of the 4th. But you're here with me. Amen. And we are all here with the Lord. So we're going to receive what the Lord would say to us today because God's got a plan. I'm not sure if you're aware, unless you have been uh, in another country or maybe even in another world, it's been kind of wild this year. There's been a lot of things going on that's not been normal, right? Not a lot of things going on very challenging. A lot of things going on that's very confusing. Who's the author of confusion? Satan is the author of confusion. We know God is the author of peace. We have endeavored to pray and seek God's face and be led by the Spirit of God. And as you know, when you are led by the Spirit of God, you know God will let you be on the front end of things. You know what's to come before it ever comes. Now, a lot of people don't believe that, but you can train your spirit just like you can your mind or your body. Amen? Yeah. Renew your mind with the Word of God. Spend time praying in the Holy Ghost and listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. He's prepared us for many things this year before it ever got here. God has been with us. He's been with us every step of the way. We have overcome, and we're continually overcoming. And no matter what's to come, thanks be unto God this morning, we have the victory in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God today that we are more than conquerors in and through Him. We can do all things, as the Word said, through Christ who strengthens Him, us. Brother Mike said that earlier out of Philippians chapter 4, right? He is the strength of our life. You say, well, I feel weak and there's no way and all such things this morning. Thank God. He said in Colossians 2.10, we're complete in Him, right? You may feel a certain way, but we have faith in God. We're not moved by our feelings, right? We're not moved by the news media. We're not moved by what everybody else is saying. We as Christians live by and only move by the Word of God and the Spirit of God, right? 
If you're going to have any stability in your life, everything else is changing. Right? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 while we're saying that. We'll give you some scripture and verse. It says this, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Verse 16 of 2 Corinthians 4 says, For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a what? A moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen. We look not at what? We look not at the things which are seen. But for the things which are seen. But the things which are seen are what? Temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. We need an eternal focus. We need a God likeness and minded focus. Right? He said we look not at the things which are seen. But at the things which are not seen. Many people are so caught up in the world. That they're missing out what God wants to do in and through them. And, he's prom and the promises in his word. We've got to be so careful with everything that's going on not to be distracted. And one of the things, this is what I have, the Lord led me really in the wee hours of this morning. I had several messages, but this is going to be titled this, 2020, the rest of the story. We're going to talk about the rest of this year. You say, well, what do you know? Only what God's told me. I'll tell you no more, no less than what he's told me. But many things are being said. Many things are being interpreted. Many things are being wondered about. Many things are being questioned. But did you know that you can know what God is doing? God is not keeping secrets in that sense anyways from His people. As far as it pertains to you and to me and His church, if we'll seek Him, we'll find Him. If we'll ask, it'll be given. If we not, it'll be open. The Holy Spirit has been given us and He's the great revealer. What in this world is going on? What's to come? What are we to do? There are many questions, even at the moment, and seemingly even more, you know, just arising daily that need answers. And again, I'm going to tell you just what the Lord has told me, and I pray that, number one, this is encouraging to you, but it also makes you aware and prepares you for things for what's to come. We have to be prepared for what's to come, or it is true we'll be caught unawares, as the Bible says, or off guard. We have to take our daily life and walk with God serious. Amen? Nothing's more important. Now you're at Luke 15. Did you go there a while ago? You didn't Luke. I didn't tell you. Luke 15. <clears throat> Luke 15. Verse 11. Now I'm not going to read the whole story. This is the prodigal son. I'm just going to. I'm not jumping over things today, but the Lord gave me point after point that maybe will just bring some things into balance, and I'm going to cover them briefly this morning throughout this service. Luke 15. We're going to talk about the remainder of this year. What the Holy Ghost is saying. You say, well, so-and-so says this, that, and the other. Well, you'll know them by their fruits is what I tell you. Amen. And also on top of that, above all else, it needs to be in line with the Word. Yeah. If people are saying things that contradict the Word of God, don't listen to them. Yeah. You still love them, but you need to ignore them. Don't listen to them. People are saying, I heard this, and I saw this, and I think this. The Bible says in the mouth of two or, two or three witnesses that every word be established. God doesn't give you anything that He don't back up with His Word. If it's not in line with the Word, it didn't come from God. This is the filter that everything in your life is received through. Right? Or not, you'll get in trouble. But what's going on today in our nation? And, and many of you say, well, I, I know this and I know that. I don't know everything. I just know God and what He said, so that's what I'm going to tell you. I don't claim to know it all. Amen? If you know it all, we're not paying you enough. <laughs> You've got to stay humble and realize that you only know one person that knows everything. Amen. And that's if you know God. Amen? But concerning our nation, it's very simple. And I'm just speaking to condition. I'm not speaking to the way that we're praying. We believe God, things are changing and turning, right? But in reality, what you're seeing, even in our country, is just the Bible coming to pass. Amen. It's all, really all you're seeing. You're seeing, honestly, several laws. The laws of sowing and reaping. Let's read this. The Lord spoke to me on Friday morning. I had no intention of even mentioning this or preaching on it by any means. But this is the story of the prodigal who? The prodigal son. He said, you're living out the story today of the prodigal nation. And that's what he said Friday morning. I think that's when me and Arlene were driving down the road. I could take you back there where I was at. He said, the prodigal nation. Does that don't mean they can't come back home. Right? 
Don't mean that it's over. But here he said in verse 11, he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. What did the young son want? He wanted what he wanted. Who else was he concerned about? Zero. He wanted what he wanted so he could live his life, his way, with no consideration about anybody else or even his own future in reality. Just living for the moment. That doesn't sound like anything we see here today, right? And he divided the Father, granted his wish, he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, this needs to be marked in your Bible because this is what made him the prodigal son. Obviously, the returning home part two, but he, whose journey did he take? Yeah. yeah. You hear Christians today, this is dangerous talk. It's dangerous, but so many do it. Everybody accepts it. It's accepted to the Bible. They say, well, this is what's best for me. You don't know what's best for you. You don't know. You don't know what's best for you because the only thing you know are some things now and what you've been through in this life. You don't know what's to come. Yeah. I have personally as a pastor watched the devil lead people way out here only to cut their feet out from under in the name of blessing every single time. Ever since the first day we got into ministry. Right? But how does that happen? Whose journey did he take? Not many days after he gathered all this stuff together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And, he, but, and what happened? When he had spent all, there arose, see, there was a time when he had plenty. Right? And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in war. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. He had a good father, good family, but he decided he wanted what he wanted. He got his inheritance ahead of time. He went and lived it up. And he went from rich to poor. That's why even here by the Holy Ghost, the Lord has told us repeatedly, it's just the Bible. It's not Pastor Jason. Don't trust in what kind of riches. What's the Bible called? Uncertain. It calls them a lot of things. You're right too. But uncertain riches. Don't tr why not trust in uncertain riches? The name says it all. They're not a sure foundation. But when you build upon the foundation of the Lord, it is true that God will bless you. Right? But everything and every opportunity is not a blessing from God. So we got to make sure we're on God's journey. But this guy, he took his own journey. And the Lord said there's two primary groups, and this is even in the body of Christ. He said the first group's like the first son. They basically forsaken God and His plan and made a cozy life for themselves in this world. But we know what happened here. We know this guy come back home and did the father reject me? Yeah. No. And even this morning, you missed it. I've missed it. Others have missed it. And I tell people all the time, they say, well, when, when was the last time you repented? Before I come out here. You say, well, what did you do? I don't really even know. But I just want to make sure my heart's right. I didn't have any, any vile sin that I committed this morning before I come to preach. But I do realize that although I'm being perfected daily and matured as I renew my mind with the Word of God, I know that I haven't arrived yet. Yeah, yeah. I understand I'm still under construction. So I always make sure my heart's right regardless. Thank God, especially when your heart's right, even when you miss it, you ask the Lord to forgive you. He's merciful. You come right back home, he received you with open arms. Aren't you thankful for that? Yes. Right? But this story is not just about the father and this young son. There was another son that never left the house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And when the prodigal come back home, you've seen this among people before. The prodigal come back home and the father welcomed him in. Well, what happened? Go on, jump down, for sake of time. Verse 25. This is the message within itself, but that's not what I'm supposed to do, so we're not going to. Preacher. Now, his elder son, 1525 of Luke, his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto them, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. The father was glad that this young son, I didn't go that far down, but at 17, he came to himself. We remember repentance is necessary for restoration. 
A lot of people are trying to restore things with God and with others today without repentance. Don't even try. That'll never work. Repentance is what allows God to change your heart. Right? You have to say, if you are wrong, I am wrong. I am sorry. I should not have said that. I should not have done that. Please forgive me. Right? And we covered last week some of the ways you know where repentance is and repentance is not. If they're still lying, there's no repentance. I see this all the time. If there's still excuses being made for sin, there's no repentance. Right? You simply just throw it all upon the mercy of the Lord. I just missed it. I just missed it. I shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have happened in that way. Amen. And thank God he's merciful. Just like that, he'll forgive you. Right? But, but this guy, this older son, the one that never left, he said unto him, Thy brother, the servant did, 27, is come and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. This guy never left the house. He didn't take his inheritance and blow it. He didn't go and be sleeping around with orange women and things. He didn't do any of those things. This guy, by appearance, would, everybody would say, he's doing what's right. He's got it together. But God looks at what? He looks more than anything. He looks at the outward appearance. That's why this racism thing in the, in the country is so stupid. Because the devil wants you focused on the color of somebody's skin. God's concerned about your heart. That's his concern. That's his focus, right? And he was angry and would not go in. So what is he also? He's pouting and he's offended. He's mad, angry, pouting and offended. He's got his lip poked out. Because they're throwing a party for his brother because the brother went out there and was acting like a hoodlum, but he repented. They come back home, and now the father's glad he's home, received him back in, right? So, he was angry and would not go in, therefore came his father out and entreated him. He answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid. What's he saying? See, the guy that left was not the only one that was selfish. He was not the only one that was concerned with self. Right? Don't go by how things look. God judges the heart of man. And at the time thy commandment, transgress not thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I may be married with my friends. You didn't throw a party for me. But as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living. What's he bringing up? Oh, look what he did. Look what he did. He don't want to talk about his heart, but look what he did. Right? As soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, you have killed the fatty calf, and said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Do you hear how the father responded? He said, Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry and be glad for this. Thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. So the first son, we see that yeah, he just simply forsook, we would say it's symbolic today, obviously. He forsook his father. Our father's who? God. Father God. And we know that many have given heed to seduce the spirits and doctrines of devils and have got completely away from God. But some are still maybe in the presence of church, but their heart and their love is waxed cold. Like this other guy. Angry and offended. And, and today, that would be today's social church and today's offended church. If it's not about them and their way, they get mad and pout. Do what I want you to do. No, we're going to do what God says do. Amen. You don't know what's best for you, and I don't know what's best for me apart from God. We're going to pray and seek God. We're going to read the Word and live by the Word. God knows what's best for us. Amen. If you want the best outcome, listen to your Creator. Yeah. Right? Amen. Not anybody's opinion. Because of the state of their hearts, just like this guy, take it for granted. What did he say? Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. We say it all the time, but we thank God we have the greatest support system today. You and I, that we could ever ask for. We got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We've been given the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit is the teacher. We got everything we need, and we're worried so often about the things that's going on in this world. There's a reason He said, be not troubled. There's a reason He said, do not be afraid. There's a reason He said, be of good cheer. For I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. God is with us this morning. Yes. Amen? Amen? But he told us in Exodus 20, verse 3, write it down. He said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go to 1 John chapter 2, the last thing along these lines. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. We need to ensure 
that our lives do not revolve around us or even others, but around the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. These guys, I think about the climate that is nothing like Bible days, but the climate even today that is more hostile towards Christianity is simply the Antichrist spirit that is already present in the world. 1 John 2, 15. But I think about these guys in the book of Acts that were beaten, that were killed, that were put in jail, all sorts of things. But they could say little to nothing against them because they took notice of them. They had been with Jesus. Yes. Amen? There was something different about them. Their life, everything, visibly even different about them. Paul said, my determined purpose is but to know you and the power of his resurrection above all else. It can't be your family. It can't be your job. It can't be your hobbies. It can't be sports, education, entertainment. If God is not your all in all in everything, if it is not seek ye first the kingdom of God, listen, it doesn't matter if it's popular today, it's going to fall. It's got to be built upon the foundation. The rock of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only thing that's going to stand. If you want a surety, you want a confidence, put your faith in God this morning. Yes, it doesn't mean you can't do and enjoy things in this life. But let Him lead and guide you and build your life and put it together according to His plan for your life. And then none of it will fall. You don't have to worry about your family going under. You don't have to worry about if they show, shut down your meal and five more after that. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. As we took up the tithes and offerings this morning, natural-minded people, not even out in the world, they don't understand the Bible. But even Christians said, I don't understand all this tithing thing. It's why God said, prove me. I'm going to give you this 10%, which in the natural makes no sense whatsoever. But I give you this 10% just to prove that your word is true. Just to prove that you'll do what you said you would do. And I know you'll never leave me nor forsake me. I know you're the Lord God. You changed not. And then you put your hand and your blessing of provision upon that 90%. And you multiply that seed that's sown. And the windows of heaven are opened up. And the blessings of God, oh, well, there's not room enough to receive them. They're poured out. What is that? That is faith in God. That is trust in God. God does what God said He would do. We must honor His Word. I think about this morning as I stand here, and I know she might not hear, but the rest of them will hear what Miss Vicky is in the hospital. God's Word works, and people will say, that's not this, that's, that's, this is, this is just what God will in this situation. It works every single time. We told you guys before this all ever started with the coronavirus in March that God has an answer. He has a cure. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And when you apply the Word of God, it works every single time. Miss Vicki will come to this church and stand here and give you her testimony because the Word works. I'm telling you, it is not about me. It's not about you. It's about us submitting to God and allowing Him to have have our way, His way in our lives. This is what's going to take place. Yes, I, I woke up on Thursday morning and it weighed on me. I was burdened by, because of Miss Vicky and the situation, although I was in faith and trust in God. You know, the Wednesday she was at death's door. She was about gone. Wednesday it was about over. She was turning blue when they picked her up and taken her to the hospital. You know she's hard-headed too and I know she'll probably hear this later. <laughs> the EMS could have took her to the hospital but she refused to go. So she was just going, you know. Then Kelly loaded her up and put her on, put him over, put her over her shoulder and, and, and got her to the hospital. She's turning blue and all sorts of things. And was really burdened. We've been praying. God instructed us out of James chapter 5 for us to come together and pray. When people are in a situation, it's what the church is supposed to do. You know, a lot of people we can't pray for that way. You say we don't just pray for everybody. I, some people, I don't know if they belong to us. I don't know if I'm their pastor. I don't know their situation because they have no connection whatsoever. You need to know who you are and whose you are. You need to know who your pastor is. You need to know who your church is. You're not living in times and seasons. See, I know I'm her pastor. And no, I'm not the one that saved her or healed her. And neither are you, but it's our faith together in God. I don't have to ask nobody. Is she at the church down the road here and nowhere else? No, we belong to her and she belongs to us. And we prayed and sought God. And I woke up on Thursday morning, even as it was horrible, horrible. And the Lord spoke this simply. He said, she shall receive recover. Yeah. She shall recover. And that's, we already believed the word but that was by the Holy Ghost. He said she, and he told me exactly what to do with her giving her testimony and everything. He said but she shall recover. And he said I'm not going to say that last night on Wednesday night y'all's faith didn't help her when she was in that time of need. He said but you tell her when she comes back too that I heard her prayer. I heard her prayer of faith. And it was the seed of the word of God that she implanted and imparted in her heart and her spirit that I heard. And he said you tell 
tell her when she comes back too. Just like in Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I heard what you said. I heard what you prayed. And she'll give her testimony right here in this church. There is a cure for every sickness, every disease. There is an answer. And people sometimes think pastors getting so upset because you just got to be careful. The, the three Hebrew children were not careful. They were not. I'm not talking about going and doing stupid stuff. But it's not stupid to trust God. It's not stupid. See, you're going to have the coronavirus and you have all sorts of things. What did God say at the beginning of the year to us? He told us to trust Him. He told us to get ready. He told us there's a shaking going on and you see it. There's things taking place, but you will face nothing. I will face nothing. And what I'll say is, he said, if we don't trust him now in the beginning, he said, you'll not be ready for what's to come. But I'm telling you, you know, no, none of us have been perfect, but you and I, we have stood on the word and trusted God, and God is doing exactly what he said he would do. Yeah. God honors his word. Yeah. So I just wondered, I don't, that's, not, that's not trusting God. Yeah. You look at the face of death. Amen? That's another thing you told me out of John chapter 11. Jesus said what? When they said he's dead, Lazarus is dead. He's been staking for four days. Maybe you got something today that you've been staking for four days and everybody's given up on you and you're tempted to give up on yourself. He said this, this death, in, in my words, this death, as Jesus said, is not what you think it is. This will be for the glory of God because he knew what was to come. He knew when he showed up on the scene, he said, well, Jesus isn't walking in bodily form today. No, but he's everywhere you and I go. Yeah, we lay hands on the sick and he'll recover. Yeah, That's why it's been so terrible. And I know people get upset. It's fine. I don't represent people. I represent God. Yeah, we should. There are things that people are running from in the church yeah. that we're supposed to be running to. Yeah, so, oh my God, you might die. It's okay if we die obeying God. Yeah. Don't fear them that can kill the body. Yeah. My concern is God. Yeah. Amen? I don't know about you. I'm just thinking naturally at this point, but it's still spiritually true. Dying looks better every day. <laughs> I told Arlene the other day, don't y'all never worry about me. I, I'm, I'm not getting a load up today. I'm not going. I'm ready to go today. I used to be scared to die. There's a good reason. <laughs> it, was a, it was a gamble. I don't know which is called. Yeah. I know that's not how God operates, but I'm talking about my lifestyle at that time. It was not as sanctified, so you know, it was not as confident as you understand how it works. But thank God today, we don't worry about what's going on around us because we know who lives in us. Yeah. Greater is He that's in you and He that's in me than He that's in the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says this says, love not the world, neither things that are in the world. Does that mean you don't love people? No, it's, it's, no, it's the system. And I'll tell you what that means. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth for how long? Yeah. Abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I'm going to live forever. What about you? Yes. Somewhere. Make sure you got your, your ticket punched yeah. in Christ Jesus. Right? He's the way, the truth, and the life. What does it mean, love not the world? What is the world? And I wrote this in my Bible to help me better understand and explain it to you. The world is not the planet. It's not planet Earth. But it's the system which man, man has built up in an effort to make himself happy without God. Yeah. The world system is the system that man has built up. The number one problem in the church today is deception. It's deception. And the only cure for deception is the same thing that's the cause for deception. The cause for deception is when you roam from the truth of God's word. The cure for it is to come back to and know what God has said. Yes. Amen? Or you'll not understand because there's a lot of things that the devil disguises as good. What would be some of the things in this world that man has built up in an effort to make himself happy without Christ? Money, obviously. Entertainment is one of them. It's wrote in my Bible. You hear a lot about today, you hear about the arts. You hear about entertainment. 
You hear even Christians say, as long as you get your education, everything will be all right. You can go to hell. Amen. I said, you can go to hell. It's been attorney there. Yes, education system, we're learning now. I'm not. I knew a long time ago. The purpose of the education system is not to train most of your children for the job that they're to do. It's to indoctrinate them with satanic principles so they can overtake this world in a bad way. People say, I don't understand why these things are happening. I didn't raise them that way. You didn't raise them that way, but you gave them somebody else to finish the job. And they're the devil. Amen? Arts, uh, arts, sports is another one. It's curse words. Sports. You see, a lot of these messages are coming through these places. You've got a lot of these individuals that they think because they make $30 million a year that somebody should listen to them. Throwing a ball around and being able to catch it doesn't really make you that much Amen. in this life. Amen? Art, sports, education, entertainment, money, but it's, the, it's not the planet, but it's the system which man has built up in an effort to make himself happy without Christ. And if we went back to Genesis, we would know how did the fall begin with to, to struggle. How, why did Eve do what she did? What did? How did Satan sell that lie? Well, even through the coronavirus, we hear it repeatedly. Repeatedly. Wisdom. Wisdom. You need to understand there's more than one kind of wisdom. Yeah. There's more than one kind of wisdom. And 99% of what you're hearing in the church is fear disguised as wisdom. And it's nothing but disobedience. You say, how do you tell the difference? Well, the wisdom, whether it's godly or satanic, would go back to what? The source. Right? Christ is our wisdom. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The wisdom of God is the applied Word of God. This is the wisdom of God. If it contradicts this, it is not the wisdom of God. But how Satan tripped up man to begin with is he contradicted other things, but he finally contradicted God's word. He introduced that word. He contradicted God's word, and he said, God knows if you just eat of this. See, y'all thought education started 20, 30, 40 years ago. It started in the Garden of Eden. So you're against education? I always try to bring in balance. As a foundation, yes. It's nothing to be built upon. The only foundation you can build upon and you can succeed is the foundation of God's Word. Now, if you're in a field or skilled and some of these guys uh, or ladies in different places, you're going to go, you're going to be a nurse, you're going to be, I know, Grace another night, the lineman and different things. You have to get your training and your skill, which I think some of those things are way more intelligent than some of these others. Some of them go to school and don't even know that. You got an idea what's up? Right? But you, you, you say, God has placed upon my heart that I'm going to be a lineman and they have a six months worth of training or however many weeks it is. Well, you, that's necessary to do that. That's not building your life upon an education system. That's getting the necessary training to do whatever you feel in your heart that God has called you to do. There's nothing wrong with that. So we want to, we're talking more about building up uh, uh, on the Word of God and that foundation above all else. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. I've got to say some of these things. I'm trying my best not to hurry, but you all know how that works out. He said at the beginning of the year, there's a shaking going on. Right? <clears throat> this was our scripture. I think I read it Wednesday night or the last Sunday. I can't remember. But in, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, see that you refuse not. This is how we started the year out every Sunday. I think the message title I went back and looked at this week was unshakable. God was preparing us with his word to be unshakable before we ever got where we're at today. Amen? That you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not, who refused him that speaketh, that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape. If we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now hath he promised, saying, yet once more, I, I, once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. This word, yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Those things that cannot be shaken may remain. And verse 28 is what we need to be found doing. We receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Kingdom of God. Let us have grace. That's what God has done for us in and through Christ Jesus. Grace empowers us to live for God in this earth. Right? It's not an excuse for sin. As it's preached today. Grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. Everything's not acceptable. With reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming, consuming, not consuming, consuming fire. It has been a shaking and a time of exposure. God said that at the beginning of last year, right? But the purpose is not to destroy anybody. God is preparing His church, right? 
The purpose is to prepare us to walk in the power of God and be those that turn this world upside down. Man gets into trouble. God's man, God's woman gets into trouble when and only when they disobey God and go against His plan and will not take heed to His constant calls upon their spirit to repent. God is not out for your bad. God is out for your good. I've had somebody years back who was at the other church and they said, I need God to give me a sign. God does not need to give you a sign. He already gave you the greatest gift He could ever give you and the best sign He could ever. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. If you need a sign more than God giving Jesus so that you can have life eternal, there's an issue there that we need to discuss because there's a lack of understanding. There's nothing greater He could do for us than what He's already done. That's why we renew our mind with the Word and we're partaking of it, right? But there has been a necessary purging. I'm not going there for the sake of time, but in Acts chapter 5, the Holy Ghost told us in the last year, the last three months, about September or October, you remember Ananias and Sapphira, right? I'm not going to read that, but go to Acts chapter 5 because I'm going to read the last part. Ananias and Sapphira, they teamed up together to lie, right? And, and what happened to them, make a long story short. They did something they didn't have to do. Just pure evil, basically. He Barnabas and different ones was bringing different things. I can't go into to, to much detail, but bringing gifts and out of a right heart motive into the church, it wasn't even required. It, it wasn't necessary. They just did it out of the goodness of their heart. And then you got Ananias and Sapphira. They would be called pretenders today. They're fake. They're pretenders, right? And what happened to them? They, they died, one right after the other, him and then her, right? Now, many would say when this happened in the church, that would shut the church down. No, there's a pruning taking place. There's been a shaking taking place. There's been an exposure. And I don't, I don't say it to hurt anybody. But the reality of it is, even with the churches, you see that much of the church is, has been weak. Many people disagree with me. That's fine. I wouldn't fight with you on it. I'm not going to. But God told me several years ago, by the Spirit of God, He said American Christianity is not biblical Christianity. He said, you cannot find the church in your country in my Bible. It's hardly none of them. You say, well, how would you know the difference? Just start reading your Bible in the New Testament, and you'll find out quickly. Most of what the church is built on today is what man wants, what's popular man, what's popular the world, and the reason you can't tell the difference between the world and the church is because there are hardly no difference. We're supposed to be opposite. Satan's plan and God's plan, as we tell you repeatedly, they don't run parallel. They run opposite. Right? So the purpose that was, was the shaking was to what? The church is being purged. What happened? The result. Did they go under? Acts 5.11. Great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. A move of God break, broke out and increased. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest of us, no man joined himself to them. But the people magnified them. And the believers were the more added to the Lord daily. Multitude both of men and women. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets. And laid them on the beds and couches. That at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And what would happen? There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem. Bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. The church today in our country has to chase people down or is trying to, I don't do that, but they're chasing people down and begging people just about to get them to listen to them, and they don't ever listen to them. Yeah. Once in a blue moon. You've got to be led by the Spirit of God and walking in the power of the Word of God. People are going to know we've been with God and their lives will be changed forever. Yeah. We've got to do it God's way. Mark 16 and Matthew 28, the Great Commission has not passed away. It has not. These things that we're seeing right now, even with Vicky and others that we're believing God for, that is supposed to be commonplace. It is what we're supposed to be doing on a regular daily basis. Right? Yes. Y'all sure? Yeah. The effect of this sin being dealt with in the church was not to destroy anybody. It caused Ananias and Sapphira, but it was because of their decision. You said, I'm missing it right now. Just repent. It's not that complicated. Just repent and God will forgive you. Amen? Thank God. You can at least thwart the damage and destruction. Several months ago, I made this statement. And I don't have time to go back through it. 
But this is why the Holy Ghost had me to do this. It's about 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I was praying and seeking God and sitting in the living room. And he gave me this message. And he said, there's several things that you have said, even that have been viewed and taken out of context with what's going on in this world. One of the things that I have said that there was something that was coming. And it would be coming this year that would be shocking and explosive. That's what I said. He said, where'd you get it from? I don't try to get nothing. I just pray and seek God. Some days I go upstairs and I pray day after day after day. I study day after day and I'm, in, I'm doing the same thing every day. Preparing for a message or my own personal walk. But then there's some days. It's, it's not every day. It's not every week to be honest with you. There's some days I go to get up and do my regular plan. And the Lord says, nope, I want to talk to you today. And he'll talk to me about different things. And that's how it comes about. It's by the Holy Ghost. And when, when, when he wills. And a lot of times if I ask him, he'll answer. And sometimes if you know God, he'll tell you, that don't concern you. Amen. He says it don't concern you. If he says it don't concern you, what does he mean? Yeah. Leave it alone. It's none of your business. Just say it in a nice way. You say, well, I don't believe Jesus will do that. Well, you go to the back of John there and see what he told Peter about John. He says, that don't concern you. What I do with him is really none of your business. Some of the translations actually say that. When he's in, he's another message. But there has been opposition. There's been different things. And there's things even that must be dealt with. I'm not going into any uh, details about this for sake of time. But I want to say this this morning. The shocking and explosive things that the Lord told me about had nothing to do with our country. Nothing to do outside. It was actually something that had the enemy had been causing problems and hindrances. And you'll see and know it. And I covered some of those things last Sunday. I brought it back again because the Holy Ghost told me to go back and get that message. And I went back and got it. But that had nothing to do with the country or the state of things. God is for us. Right? He said, well, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. I'm just telling you, when the Lord told me that, it was not about our country. It was not about the end of the year. That's not what he told me. And other people are saying, this is what he said. This individual, that. I'm just telling you, that's not what he said to me. That was about mine and Arlie's ministry and what we're called to do and some of the ways he's working and moving. God's moving right now because there's things that's happened and been happening, not just a little here or there, been continually going on that must be addressed just like what Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah. It's unpopular, but we want revival today with only cherry picking the Word of God. You've got to take the whole thing. It don't work that way. I told you last week when I started, you remember what the Holy Ghost said? When I used to come to church raised up, if you had anything in your life that was sin, you scared to death before you got there. It used to be the preacher could hear the Holy Ghost. Not all of them. But this day and time, a lot of times the preacher got worse than the people did. Not all of them. I didn't say everybody. I don't know everybody. But I know many. It used to be you scared. Because yeah. the preacher listened to the Holy Ghost. He'd tell you what happened Saturday and Friday and Thursday. You better get it right. Yeah. And then many people said, that's not love. Yes, it was. Who the Lord loves, he corrects. I'm not saying they didn't do it in the flesh. They didn't do it the right, the right way. It might have done it the wrong way. I don't know. But we can't throw, as Dr. Hayden used to say, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a right and a wrong with everything. And we need to listen to the Spirit of God. There's things that need to be addressed. We address them and move forward. Now, look at this. This was another thing. And I could talk to somebody individually and they know what I'm talking about. But this was yesterday. We have to be careful. This was last weekend yesterday. There was one individual, this is a minister, that was saying, I had listened to it before somebody talked to me about it yesterday. This individual has been saying repeatedly, brace yourself. Brace yourself. And he's not the only person I've ever seen that. I want, to, I want you to be careful of that. Because this is what the Holy Ghost told me immediately. He said, I have not told my people to brace themselves. He said, I have told you last year, and I told you in January, I told you to build your faith. I told you if you didn't walk by faith at the beginning of the year, you would not be ready for what's to come. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 3, what do you say about the three Hebrew children? Were they careful? He said, we will not be careful. I want you to understand, the devil has nothing for God's church. He has nothing for God's people. Nothing. You and I have no reason to fear. None. No reason to be worried. No reason to be concerned. Must be careful every single word that we listen to, right? So we want to make sure that we're building our faith repeatedly and daily in the Word of God. There are things you can do that will suck the faith out of you. And it matters even where you go to church today. You need to be built in the faith. You need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. 
You need to know you've got authority over all the power of the enemy. You need to know how this thing ends. We win. I said, we win. That's what the Bible says. Amen? But the Holy Ghost also told me this, and I've got many minister friends that are this way. You say, are you judging? No, but I, I know about the fruit. I just listen. The Holy Ghost said this, be careful who you give your ear to, and he's talking about the news media. He's talking about news and radio and articles and all this stuff. He said, because my men and women cannot possibly turn their ear to Satan's report and then rightfully speak what I'm saying in my church. He said, it's impossible. Feed on the Word of God. Give no provision for the flesh. No provision for the enemy. Let him that still steal no more. Don't give the devil a place. So we are not, we are not holding on and just making it by in that sense. We want to be careful with that. We're a militant church. Have I not said that repeatedly? I'm clarifying some things because it needs to be clarified. Even with what I said. Because even the other day when I was talking about this, Lord, he said, well, you said some of these things. And I said, well, I'm not doing this service for that purpose. But the Holy Ghost told me. He said, just go ahead and straighten it all out. We don't need to brace ourselves in the sense of trying to hold on. Because I want you to understand something. Everybody's going to know who we are in Christ Jesus. There's, there's no fear. Nobody, no country, nobody can shut God's church down. Nobody. You things change. Things, yeah, things may be different. But the reality of it is we trust God. Amen? And He's going to put us over and not under. Concerning the end of this year. This is what the Holy Ghost told me. This is what He said. He said concerning the end of this year. And you say this isn't in detail. But I'm just telling you. He said concerning the end of the year. You're going to see the results of your faith. And your prayers answered at the end of this year. It'll be like a reprieve. And you say pastor. This, you've been saying that the Bible says evil will wax worse and worse. Get in the Bible and write to divide it. You'll also see that there's always seasons in your life. If it was 100 miles an hour all the time, you probably wouldn't make it. Neither would I. You have seasons that you go through. Even Paul did it. Even Elijah. And Elijah, they had seasons, even Jesus, that they went through. There was times that they were under great temptation, great duress, and great opposition. And there were times that they were taking meat, eating, drinking, and being married. They had different seasons in life. The world will wax worse and worse, but we have to realize we're not the world. We live in this world, but not of this world. And as the divide gets bigger, it's going to give us an opportunity for our light to shine brighter than it's ever been before. Right? Who are we? We're the remnant church that through the Word of God and the Spirit of God, God is raising up a group of people. Amen? It's going to change in all of the course of this earth forever as the former and latter rain comes together. And see, very often you can be careful. You have to be careful interpreting things. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. This is a, I know this is kind of like a more than one thing that we're talking about here. But I want to ensure that you know what's going on as far as I know. I don't know everything. I can only tell you what the Lord revealed to me by the Spirit of God. But I can tell you this morning, be not troubled, do not be afraid. Yeah. I can tell you this morning we're going over, not under. Yeah. I can tell you this morning that we're going to start churches all around the East Coast. I can tell you this morning that the Holy Ghost has spoken. I listened to Dr. Hankins and Lord Lady, one of y'all shared, and she was... Let me listen to it. We drive down the road the other day. And, and he was talking about that the communistic atheism was coming in this country. This is when 60 something? 60 something? Mr. King, someone was listening to it today? 60 something? 63. And he was talking about it coming. And he said during that time, he said, the liberties in your country will be decreased until the end. He said, but listen to me. He said, you'll enjoy the most liberties right now that you ever will in this country. He said, but listen to me. He said, it's going to be like little dots he saw. He said, I saw darkness, but then he saw dots of light. And he started talking about a mighty move of God in the church of the living God. And I, I'm not saying I was as educated to know the Spirit as much as Dr. Hankin, but you guys have, have just, I, could, I, didn't, I didn't do it in front of our lady. Not she didn't care. She probably liked her. Everybody likes their husbands to cry and be all emotions. But I, when, when they said that, I could have just, I could have just broke down because it just hit me. This is what the Holy Ghost told me many years ago. Papa used to take us back there where Wesley lived, and then we lived before that, back at the back of the farm. They had two hay fields back there. And we'd take a big old thing of straw and wrap up one end real tight and light the other end, and we'd take that thing, and Papa would say, take off running, and we'd run around the corners of the field, and it would just drop different places in light, and then it would all burn together. And he said, that's what I've called you to do in the body of Christ, is to set forth revival in my church and among my people. And when Dr. Hagen said that by the Spirit of God, you know, he's been in heaven for quite a few years now, since 2003, and that was many years before that, when he said that by the Spirit of God, that's, God said, that's what I'm talking about. That's what's going to happen. Listen, our best days are yet ahead of us. Our best days are yet ahead of us. I couldn't tell you that enough this morning. I didn't say it's not going to be bad in the world, but our best days are yet ahead of us. 
We're going over and not under. Matthew 24. Concerning one last thing I think that I said. I've said all kinds of stuff, but I'm only telling you what the Holy Ghost said. Matthew 24. This is talking about the days, times, and seasons. An imbalance. You understand. All right. His disciples are asking. What are they asking? In verse 3. Disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of thy coming in the end of the world? I want you to understand something when we read this. And I'll tell you this often, but maybe not enough. I don't want you to be coming here and be scared. That, that's important to me that you're not scared. It's important to me that you're not hanging on for dear life. That is not what we're supposed to be doing. Listen, when we, I, I try to explain these things to you. This is going to be, there's, there's more to this, but these are major events. What's the next major event in the church? The next thing's going to happen. I mean, yeah, the rapture, right. There's many things that will happen, but the rapture, next big event. The rapture. This here is not talking about the rapture. This is talking about the second advent of Christ. The rapture is going to take place. Before the worst of the worst comes, you and I are going to be raptured out of here. Yeah. We're going to take as many people with us as we can. I'm 100% against this mentality that I'm going to get over here in the corner and hold on and have an escapism mentality and we just barely going to get by. We're supposed to go out here with a bang. That's not scripture. Yeah. Well, I said we're supposed to be making some noise. I don't care if we got to do it in the streets and they try to run us off. Because another thing the Lord told me many days ago, he said, I was coming off leaving Miss Frank in this house one day. This has been when we first moved here. I don't even know what it means. That's why I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do and what we're not going to do because I don't know. I don't know everything. But I come off the bypass there. I can take you where I was at right before I got on 501 there. Headed back to my house. And the Lord said, I want you to listen to me, son. He said, I'm going to change you while you do church. Will you listen to me? I'm going to change you while you do church. He said, what does that mean? I still another day. But he reminded me this past week to be ready to change. So as he changes us, we can't just do what we've always done. If he changes us, if we have to preach down in the woods somewhere, that's what we'll do. But we're going to preach the gospel. It don't matter where it's at, uptown, downtown, all around. Amen. But I prayed about all the bills and everything he told us to do. And he said, I know what I'm doing. You trust me. So we're moving forward just obeying God. Right? But the rapture is the next thing to take place for the worst of the worst comes. Then you're going to have the seven years of tribulation. Three and a half years are going to be good. Three years, three and a half is going to be you're going to wish you to die and couldn't, right? But, then, but then, then the second advent comes when Jesus and all of us come back from earth, from heaven here on the earth to set things up and finish the whole deal, right? That's the second advent. So if you look at time, it's true what we tell you, but when you come here, the fullness of these things are not going to happen before we leave here. They're not going to happen before the rapture takes place. But you're going to see things increase, and we try to explain that to you. And part of this was for the Jews and not for you anyways. So we need to understand that. But it's still true what we say. One of the biggest issues in verse 4, I've been studying for months. I haven't preached on it yet. But Jesus answered and said, the first thing he said was, take heed that no man deceive you. That's everywhere now. Yes. People that think they're right and they're 100 miles away from the truth. Yeah. Have no idea what's going on. And that's not even people in the world. That's in the church. Yes. Is that what makes you think you're right? I don't think I'm right. You better know you're right. If I don't know what I'm talking about, I keep my mouth shut. There's certain things I'll tell. I'm quick to tell you. Dr. Hagen said as much as he knew a hundred times over more than me, he said, I'll tell anybody at any given time to ask me a question. I don't know, but I'll find out. Yeah. Be humble enough to say, I don't know. I don't know everything God does, right? But he said, take heed that no man deceive you. No, and all that's good. But, but this was the concern of the end of the year. I'm just trying to bring this into balance before I let you go. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> but he says here in verse 7, nation shall rise against nation. These things have been going on for a long time. Just increasing. Kingdoms against kingdoms, there shall be famines and pestilences and, die, and earthquakes in divers places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Not the middle, not the end, the beginning. And that's even referenced in the second advent. You and I are going to be raptured out of here. Right? But he said, that, I said this at the beginning of the year. Before the coronavirus ever hit. One of the things that the Lord told me was coming this year. And then you say, well, you might have missed it. We'll find out, so it's no big deal. It doesn't matter. I have nothing to prove other than we want to trust God. If we miss it, what do we say? I missed it. I'm sorry. But I don't sit around and think about this stuff, and I don't get my information off the news. I just pray and see God. The Holy Spirit said to tell you when I said that at the beginning of the year, that's got nothing to do with the election. Zero. Matter of fact, this is how it came about. He said, he said, go to Matthew 24. He said, that's where you're going to find what's coming. He said... And what scripture was it? Seven, nation will rise against nation. If you go down, there'll be famines, there'll be pestilences, there'll be earthquakes in diverse places. And he started talking to me about earthquakes coming, but he was talking to me and he said it's going to be a, like a perfect storm. And it's going to be 
the climate is going to come together. Exactly what he said. It's going to be a catastrophic weather event to hit our country. It would be said. They would say this in the news. You already heard them talking about hurricanes. Yeah. They bet not. You say, well, it hasn't come to pass. No, we just got into it. But they said it's going to be one of the worst hurricane seasons that we ever had. Are we even in it? I think we got storms before we ever got the season this year. Right? They're predicting it. It would be said that this, they had never seen the conditions come together in this way to produce a perfect storm. That's what they were going to say. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. Before the coronavirus ever got here. That's why he said, stand up now, build your faith, and trust me, because if you don't trust me now, you're not going to be able to stand with what's to come. So there is going to be pressure. There's going to be opposition. But by faith, we overcome. Faith is the victory that overcometh anything that you face in this earth. That was not about the election. That was not about things going awry, things going under. That had nothing to do with that. That was actually about a major storm of destruction in the top tier of anything we've ever seen to come to this country. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. It was not anything to do with the election. Nothing. The only thing the Lord has said to me concerning the end of the year, election, everything else, is but you will see the results of your faith and prayer. And he's talking about all of us, not just me. Right? Last passage. Go to Haggadah. I'm not going to read all this, but you remember in Haggadah, they had neglected. How you say it? Oh, Granny, I thought Granny would get me sick. I thought Riley was there. I know I'll probably say this one wrong. Daddy used to say Haggai. Maybe that's how you're supposed to say it, but it doesn't look like that to me. Just don't name me kid that hang you up. He's a prophet. And he's talking about the, the Lord's house is neglected. Go down to verse 6. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house? Talking about the temple, the day being the church of the living God. Of course, you and I are temples of the living God. To lie in waste. Now, therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, what did he say? Consider your ways. We all need to be doing that. Then he said it again in verse 7. Consider your ways. So we want to assess the situation, what they're doing, and he's telling them to we need he need they need to build the church, build the temple back, right? Go on to verse 12 says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtu, I mean say that Joshua the son, all the way down, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. The words of Haggai the prophet is the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, What did God say? I am with you, saith the Lord. But the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of all these different ones, the high priest, and the spirit of all the what? The remnant of the people. There is a remnant today of God's people, God's church, that has not been, has not bowed and refused to. They're standing on God's word. You remember Elijah thought he was the only one left. Was he right? No. God said, that's just what you think. I got him hit by two different places in the case. He says, the remnant of the people, and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts. Their God in the fourth and twentieth day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king. And then we'll read this last little bit, and then I'm going to let you go. In verse 1 of chapter 2, it says, the seventh month. In the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of the Lord to the prophet Haggai by him. Speak now to all of these again, the high priest, the residue of the people, the remnant, the residue who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory. You know, some of you have been the ones that have said, talking about the move of God, remember how it used to be. What's coming is greater. Amen. How do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes? In comparison of it is nothing. Yet now be strong, saith the Lord, and be strong. The high priest and be strong. All you people of the land, saith the Lord, why? For And work, work, work. Consider your ways and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenanted. Aren't you glad? You're in covenant with God today. With you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. And he said, fear ye not. Speaking to the remnant. This building is church. This applies today by the Holy Ghost. He said, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, this goes with Hebrews 12, it is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house was a servant. 
The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And of this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. God is with us this morning. Yeah. God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? And I'm going to say lastly again, the last half of this year, the Holy Ghost said to me that we will see the results of our faith and we will see with our own eyes the answer to our prayers. While it is true that evil is going to wax worse and worse in this earth, it's also true there's a move of God in the making that is going to turn this world upside down. Through the Word of God and the Spirit of God, you and I are leaders and generals in this last day army. God has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. And just as He said repeatedly throughout the Bible, do not be troubled. Do not be afraid. Be of good cheer. As he told Paul what he said. Be of word for service. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. We've got to trust Him. Yeah. It's going to be like He told me. God is looking for men and women that will say, God, I have heard what you have said. He's looking for men and women that, that maybe you haven't been serious about God. But you're saying, God, I see what you're saying. I see what you're doing. I ask you to forgive me. Get things right back in line. And God can use you as one of these troops in this army. God's got a plan for us. Stand on your feet. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We love you and thank you so much for this day. You many blessings your hand upon us, your spirit leading guides. We thank you for all you've done and all you're doing. We thank you, Father. We renew again our commitment to you. We thank you, as Paul said, our determined purpose this morning is both to know you and the power of your resurrection. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as Lord of my life. It's where everything starts. There's nothing until you make Jesus Lord of your life of any good, of any worth, of definitely of any eternal value. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. For whoever calls upon His name will be saved. Maybe you're here today.